Mr. Franco Asonimus. He is a senior water resources specialist with World Bank. Based in Islamabad since August 2022, uh, he combines a technical background of water and irrigation engineering and hands-on experience in dealing with institutional and organizational issues of water resources management and water delivery services. So please come to the stage. Our next uh, panelist is, is Mr. Tahir Anwar. Uh, Tahir Anwar Sahib is an agriculture engineer by profession. Mr. Anwar is graduated from the University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. Please feel free. Anyway, come in the center. Uh, he acquired his postgraduate from the Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. He served uh, Pakistan Agriculture Research Council for 22 years in various positions before joining Ministry of National Food Security and Research. And uh, he was the DG when we started working on solar, I remember. So, sir, please come to the stage. Our next uh, panelist is uh, Dr. Claudia Ringler. Uh, Claudia is Director of the National Resources and Resilience Unit at the International Food Policy Research Institute, where she coordinates research at the intersection of nature, agriculture, and development for tangible progress towards more equitable and resilient food systems. She is the co-lead of the CGIR Nexus Gains Initiative. She drives research on the role of energy in transforming food and water systems and on climate change adaptation and mitigation. Welcome, Dr. Claudia. Our next uh, panelist is Dr. Adil Vakas. Uh, Dr. Adil Vakas is a professor uh, and, is and he's associated with the uh, US Pakistan Center of Advanced Studies in Energy uh, in the Nas University. Uh, he's the principal of that center. Dr. Adil obtained his PhD degree in energy technology, uh, MS in energy conservation techniques, and a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Uh, we are very glad that he is also part of our panel today. Welcome, sir, on the stage. And our final panelist is Mr. Nasir Jamal, engineer Nasir Jamal. Uh, Nasir is the CEO of the Rabel Technologies, a private sector entity, and uh, they are working with the government and the private sector in providing the solar based solutions uh, welcome to all the panelists on the stage and uh, we'll start our discussion uh, with the uh, world banks so uh, from your point of view uh, a couple of points that i would like to direct towards you nasir uh, one was the quality or the standardization of equipment that uh, dr adil mentioned and the uh, other point that uh, Tahir Saab just mentioned was about uh, people or the farmers abandon uh, some of these high efficiency irrigation systems after the project support is, is no not there. Uh, since you have been one of the service providers to, to the government, uh, what is your take on this? And uh, how do you think, you know, uh, this coupled system could be made sustainable uh, if government is to invest in the similar system in the future as well? Thank you, Dr. for the opportunity. Uh, I say not obviously uh, exceptions are there, but normally in subsidized system, the subsidized system is so designed that uh, they allocate target targets to the district uh, officers. And when it comes to target and achieving a target, nobody uh, or at least very few bother about the quality of the work. They just are interested in numbers okay this much acre has been installed whatever the target has been assigned so this happened uh, in subsidized program most of the time and uh, next is that when you uh, you have uh, a policy that solar system will be installed to only those who install drip irrigation most of the farmer install drip irrigation just to get subsidy or a huge subsidy on solar system and uh, weeks or after certain months, I, again, exceptions are there, not all, but most of the time I, I've seen that they abandon the drip irrigation and they start flooding with the uh, solar system. The problem here is not the system, not the farmer. The problem is the selection of farmer. Being in the private sector, uh, uh, you mentioned I have supply and service companies, but I uh, discontinued that service around five years back and the to the private sector and now I don't avail any uh, or don't give service with any government department and even then we are running our system we are installing drip irrigation we are installing solar operated drip irrigation and non-solar operated drip irrigation for last more than five four or five years and they are still running the problem is I will not like to mention the province but uh, uh, <laughs> the the PC one of a province 
says that drip irrigation will be installed only in acres, uh, only to the farmer who has more than five acres of land. And if, as per the statistics, that's 50% uh, of the farmer has a land holding of less than three acres. So you are ignoring that 50% of the farmer, which are basically needy farmers. So why not? to design such such a system that you always focus the needy farmers. And if you focus on the needy farmers, they will never abandon the system. They will operate it. And yes, we are not interested in irrigation with uh, sand media filter, with hydrocyclone filter, with this filter, with water meter, with this, this and that, which increases not only the initial cost, but also the running cost. Because, because every friction uh, equipment has a friction losses, and you have to overcome it with the help of pump, which increases the horsepower. So it increases the initial and the running cost as well. I have installed system for three acres, two acres, one acres, uh, minimum of filtration but necessary filtration. And I have designed it in such a way that it can be uh, done by a gravity or I call it a low head system. So decreasing the running cost and also decreasing the initial cost. So that is the way we have to provide customized solution. A farmer of a Punjab, which, who has a land of over 25 acres, his system needs something else. The dynamics of his system designed with something else. But a farmer in KPK who might have uh, two or three acres. You cannot design or you cannot copy paste that system over here. You have to provide them subsidized solution. Uh, and secondly, Adopsa mentioned the quality. Yes, that is the problem. In Pakistan, we have A grade, B grade, C grade. Now, might be in few days if it's a D grade. So, so that is the problem that uh, most of the farmer, I'm being a YouTuber, I'm, most of the time I got the call that my uh, I have installed a tube well. It was running fine, but now after two, three years, it has a problem in running and, and it's not providing the desired amount of water because the panel is B or C grade. So in due passage of time, it degrades and that's why its uh, generation is reduced. So uh, we have uh, Internet Energy Development Board. They must come in uh, into this scenario. They have standard for net metering. Same standard can be utilized for solid tube wells with some alternation, necessary alternation. And I wonder how come a sub uh, quality solar panel even passes through the ports. We, we must have a policy that only A grade panel will be, uh, can, can be allowed in the Pakistan. And let me tell you in local market, the rate of B or C grade is very, very marginally less than A grade. Might be uh, a difference of five or six rupees a watt, not more than that. But farmers don't know anything about it. Number one, number two, we need to educate our farmer. We need to educate him on how to select his pump. Even in 2023, our farmer mentioned pumps in inches. I have a two inch pump. I have a three inch pump. This has nothing to do with the flow rate. This is so we have to educate him through social media or to other platforms that how how to select. Uh, particular pump for your exact uh, requirements. Perfect. Uh, one thing that uh, we also recommended in our uh, recommendations that, you know, so we have to have zone specific customized solutions that would be more lasting in the longer run rather than, you know, having a one recipe that would be uh, useful for each and every category. Uh, 